So there's a saying that if you build a house on sand, when the storm comes, the house washes away. From a financial standpoint, building a house on financial sand is not a great idea. But if you build a house on a financial foundation, like concrete, like rock, solid ground, that house, even though the storm comes, and even though the roof may blow off and the walls may come down, you can always rebuild from a strong foundation. And financially speaking, that's what life insurance is. That during the darkest moments in most people's financial life, this financial product, this instrument that has helped the rich get richer, is able to be applied to the multicultural middle class. And that's why I love the life insurance industry for what it does. So in this episode of Living Money Smart, we're gonna be talking about the biggest money mistake that most people make for generations. Thank you for taking part of the YouTube Best Comments Challenge here on my channel. You got a chance to win this book, Living a Life of Significance by George Jordan. And by the way, this month is Life Insurance Awareness Month and how fitting would it be to have you get this book to honor this month. And I chose this comment on my YouTube channel to win the book. Thank you for taking the time to drop your comment below. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please like our business page. Since it went so well, we're going to do the YouTube Best Comments Challenge again for this week. But I want to add some juice to it. If you're in the Chicagoland area for the Insurance News at Super Conference, September 26th to the 28th, I want to coordinate a special meetup for you with my mentor, Patrick Bet David, the number one YouTube channel for entrepreneurs and host of Valuetainment. Best way to get selected? Let me give you a hint. Follow my profile on Instagram, drop me a comment. At the same time, drop a comment here on the YouTube channel. At the same time, Go to my Facebook page, Money Smart Guy, and like our business page. Send me a message that you're following our three profiles, and guess what? I'm gonna put your name in a hat to be selected in a raffle to have an invitation to this meetup here in Chicago with my mentor, Patrick McDavid. Sound like a plan? All right, let's go. So in this episode of Living Money Smart, we're gonna be talking about the biggest money mistake that most people make to keep people broke for generations. Many people, young men and women, enlist in our armed forces. I enlisted in the Marine Corps to take advantage of opportunity, to defend this country, to defend what I felt was home, at the same time to make sure I'm able to serve and able to give back in some way. Many people come here from other countries. Our family came from the Philippines to take advantage of living their American dream. Yet, over time, there's been a gap, a gap of people that have and have not between the rich and the poor. And guess what? Over time, that gap has just gotten worse. What I laugh about is how many financial experts on TV make financial freedom sound so simple. Save 10%, get out of debt, live underneath your means. Man, in a perfect world, that would actually work out. But if there's something that the military taught me is that if something can go wrong, it will. Let me ask you a question. Does it bother you that people today living in one of the wealthiest countries in the world are still living paycheck to paycheck? I mean, even people making $100,000 a year are literally considered broke. I mean, how many times have you seen people healthy one day, the next life changes? Priscilla Land, one of our licensed agents and one of the leading associates here in our office in Oakbrook, posted this on her Facebook page on an observation she had this weekend while in LaGrange, Illinois, which is a very well-to-do suburb of Chicago. For me, myself, actually, I grew up in Burbank, so LaGrange was always seen as a neighborhood like on the other side of the tracks. This past uh, weekend, as I was coming from an appointment, little to my knowledge, you know, it was kind of a shock to me to see that a sign was being held up by a gentleman. What really uh, stood out to me was the fact that his sign said, had two jobs, you know, two kids, very sick daughter, you know, huge medical bills. And, you know, for me, it tugged at my heart because you would think LaGrange, you know, it's a community of very well-off people. But sometimes, you know, when what happens when you're not educated about your finances that when the winds of life happen, if you're not prepared, I mean, your family now is in, in financial distress. Every day we see common folks, hardworking folks, financially exposed in one area. And had this area been covered and addressed, and or at least the awareness been made, they would have saved themselves a lot of financial grief. So what am I talking about? 
they lack sufficient life insurance coverage. Now I know what you're saying, life insurance, oh, here we go again. But here's the reality. This is a major reason why the rich get richer. The truth is we're not getting out of this life alive. In the words of the famous wide receiver and poet Jarvis Landry of the Cleveland Browns, when it comes to your friends and family, you want to bless them. Yes, you want to bless them. But yet, Americans are programmed to buy the wrong type of insurance. Let me explain. They get insurance on their cell phones, iPads, computers, car insurance, homeowners insurance. And yet everyone focuses on benefits at their job like 401k, pension, health insurance benefits. But which forms of these insurance pays your bills if you die too soon, you live too long, or have a severe change in health? None of them. But think about it, who's smart here? The banks, the financial institutions, these companies that create products for you, they got it figured out that insurance can help you and at the same time protect their financial interests. So if they're doing it, why aren't we doing it for ourselves? My wife, Sheena Sapala, a licensed life insurance agent, will share with you her thoughts on what sufficient life insurance coverage is and what it can do for you. Babe, take it away. What a lot of people don't understand about life insurance just in general, if you look at in life, the three biggest financial crises that people face. Number one, uh, someone dies unexpectedly. Number two, uh, worst incident that can hit you financially is a health issue. We're talking about the big three, heart attack, stroke, cancer. And what people don't know about a life insurance policy in today's reality is when that does happen, you can choose to use your death benefit while you're still alive. They call it living benefits, Go, no pun intended. And the third one is a way for you to put money in life insurance, allow it to grow and not lose, and live off of it in terms of retirement income tax-free. Now, I've been in this industry now for going on 19 years. My wife and I have worked together building an agency for the last six. My role these days is about recruitment, agency development, leadership, and mentoring. And yet, the number one financial setback that I see in everybody they recruit, and everybody we talk to at our workshops, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Most people lack financial resources when the shit hits the fan. Think about it. What's the knee-jerk reaction that most people have when they get hurt? They can't go back to work. Their health changes and they can't pay the bills. They drain their 401k, they charge up their credit cards, and they lean financially on friends, family, and charity. And then when that runs out and that isn't sufficient enough to help, what do they do? They put their virtual financial handout in the form of a GoFundMe page. Isn't it crazy to see that people are using GoFundMe for emergencies and funerals? You see, that's what life insurance is supposed to help you avoid. So back to my wife, Sheena. Babe, tell us, what does a typical life insurance policy cost to give one financial control, peace, and confidence in the middle of a crisis? So I'm gonna walk you through a basic fundamental exercise so you can understand how much insurance is really needed. And we call this the DIME method. So D stands for, I'll write it out for you, it stands for debt. Any debt, this could be consumer debt, this could be student loans, it also could be burial expenses. And that's what falls inside that category. So let's just say that's 30,000. So next up is mortgage. So I'm a wife, I'm married, I live in a house, there's still $200,000 left on the mortgage. So we're gonna put that number up here too. E stands for education. I have kids, I want them to go to school. Let's just say I have one child, standard average cost of one full year of a university is 25,000. For four years, that's a total of 100,000. So if something happens to me, $100,000 out of my death benefit, would go towards paying for my child to go to school. So we're gonna put 100,000 there. The last one is I, and the reason I leave this for last is actually the most important. It stands for income replacement. So I wanna make sure that two, three, four thousand dollars a month continues to go into that household to keep everybody safe and sound. Let's just say I'm gonna make sure that $5,000 continues to come into the household every single month. That would mean 60,000 a year. And let's just say I wanted that to last for 10 years. That's a total of 600,000. So my income replacement equals 600,000. If I add all that up, that is my total insurable need. And in this scenario, the six, the two, the one, you have right there $900,000 plus additional 30. My total insurable need is 930,000. And most times when I show people this number, they really realize how underinsured they are. So that was your lesson today on how to understand your insurable needs. Yeah. Yeah.
So do you think I believe on the power what life insurance does to make sure I pass on generational wealth? Got to give a financial head start to the people I love and care about long after I'm gone. These are my personal life insurance policies right here. I remember starting off with one life insurance policy. The more money I made, the more I put into these plans. The more money I made, the more I realized I need to protect myself legally in terms of wills and trusts. I've seen so many people, celebrities in fact, screw up their finances. And you think just because they're up there, everybody knows them, there's actually people helping them, right? Wrong. Instead of leaving their kids wealth, uh, all their hard work that they built throughout their entire career, they leave Uncle Sam and cousin California or cousin Illinois to stick their hands in their financial pockets. Here's some examples of Prince. Here's some examples of Paul Walker. In the most recent example, Aretha Franklin, no will, no conversation of making sure she leaves behind her financial legacy to her children. Money that should have gone to the kids, money that should have gone to heirs, charity, and is unnecessarily now going to probate court, lawyers, and probate fees. I mean, if you had a choice, you would want to avoid all that, wouldn't you? Even when Michael Jackson passed away, he didn't have an estate plan or sufficient life insurance coverage to let his family fight over the money. This estate was a typical asset rich, uh, cash poor or house rich cash poor type of estate. It was reported that less than $700,000 he had in the bank. It's like the common person walking around with $20 in a wallet hoping to get by for the rest of the month. Mm. So to avoid the biggest problem that keeps people broke from generation to generation is to acquire a financial tool in your house that no other financial tool can do for you. Life insurance does what no other financial vehicle can do, which is create dollars out of pennies. In the words of a little girl whose father had purchased life insurance to leave a financial legacy long after he was gone, she said this, my daddy today is still sending me his checks from heaven. All right, it's time for you to drop your thoughts and comments below and participate in the YouTube Best Comments Challenge here on my YouTube channel to receive this book, Living a Life of Significance by Joe Jordan. I'd really love to know what you think and whether or not you thought that life insurance was really this powerful. If you're watching this on YouTube and you've watched it this far, I hope I earned a new subscriber. So please click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload the next video. And if you're watching this on Facebook and you're watching up until now, I hope I earned a new like on our business page. Thanks for watching Leave Your Money Smart. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.